just how much time is left on the countdown to the second coming. When will we see the three days of darkness, the Antichrist, the minor chastisement, the great tribulation, the great apostasy, I mean, the persecution, the death of Antichrist, the second coming, and the consummation of fire on the world of the end times? When will we see all this? Where are we right now, and what can we expect next? I'm sharing all of that from Dr. Taylor Marshall's book, Antichrist and Apocalypse, The 21 Prophecies of Revelation, Unveiled and Described. And I'm going to do that next. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. So where are we on the countdown to the second coming? When will we see these great times these end times, the chastisements, and so much more. When will we see the second coming and the consummation of fire? I'm going to get into that, but if you missed Friday's video on the Antichrist and the pretender in Israel, make sure to check out the linked video in the description or up above because you're not going to want to miss that. I get into what we know about the Antichrist. What can we expect of Antichrist? Where will he come from? Where will he rule? All of that in that video. Make sure to check that out. But I want to get into this book because uh, I want to talk about the timeline. Where are we right now in the timeline of events? Dr. Taylor Marshall in his Appendix 1 says, quote, Holhauser says that the end of our fifth epoch will end with a minor chastisement. After this chastisement, we will experience a restoration of the Catholic Church to her former glory under a holy pope and a great monarch. Who is Holhauser? What are these epochs? He has a chart here where he breaks this down in the most simplified form because Holhauser was a priest, a mystic priest of the 17th century. And he basically took the seven letters to the seven churches in the book of Revelation and Apocalypse, and he correlates them to seven periods of time and history of the Old Testament covenant and seven periods of history and time in the New Testament era. Okay, so he's linking all three and showing the parallels to all three. But just to simplify this, let me quickly go over for you what these seven epochs are so you can get the lay of the land, the context, before we dive in specifically to where we're at right now in the in the timeline, the, the, the countdown to the second coming. That is coming up here in just one moment. Uh, but epoch number one. This correlates to the letter to Ephesus in the book of Revelation and to the time period of Adam in the Old Testament and the preaching of the apostles culminating in the death of Peter and Paul in 67 AD. That's epic number one. Epoch number two is the letter to the Sumerians in the book of Revelation, to the time of the patriarchs in the Old Testament, and from the death of Peter and Paul all the way to the conversion of the Roman emperor Constantine in 337 AD. Epoch number three correlates from the letter of Pergamos in the book of Revelation and the book of the Apocalypse to the time of Moses in the Old Testament and from Constantine all the way to Charlemagne in the imperial Christianity in the time of the New Testament era. Epoch number four uh, correlates from the letter to Thyatria in the book of Revelation, the book of the Apocalypse to the time of the kings in the Old Testament, and from Charlemagne to the Protestant Revolution in the era of the New Church, the New Testament Church, that is. Epic or epoch number five, this is the one that's pivotal for us to understand. I'm going to circle back more on that in a moment, but this correlates from the letter of Sardis in the book of Revelation, the book of Apocalypse, to the Babylonian exile in the Old Testament, where they lost the temple, Jerusalem's destroyed, the temple's destroyed, and they're hauled off into exile, a time of affliction. In the New Testament, this is, this is going to be the same. We're going to see a time of affliction in the New Testament era and a time of exile in this New Testament era. And this will take us all the way until the, the uh, uh, it'll happen from the Protestant Revolution until some future time. We're going to get into that. The sixth epoch correlates from the letter to Philadelphia in the book of Revelation, the book of Apocalypse, and the rebuild temple, the coming home from exile, rebuilding a, a new time, a new era, and like almost like some might say a springtime in some ways. This is the Old Testament reference, and in the New Testament, this will be a state of consolation, a returning from exile, and it will culminate in the coming of Antichrist. So we're going to get into that as well. And then, of course, the seventh epoch represents the letter to the Laodiceans, the, the lukewarm church 
In the Old Testament, it refers to the coming of Christ, the nativity of our Lord and Savior. In the New Testament era, this will come from the time of Antichrist until the second coming of Christ and the consummation of the world in fire. So those are the epochs in their sort of most brief form. I'm going to link to the entire book. You should put meat on that bone. But let's talk specifically about the fifth epoch. In the chapter where, where Dr. Taylor Marshall goes through the seven letters to the seven churches, and he talks and breaks down the, the seven periods of history in the Old Testament, and now let's talk about what Holhauser had to say about this fifth epoch. He says, Holhauser identifies the fifth epoch as the status afflictionis, or the state of affliction. The arrival of Martin Luther in 1517, the sack of Rome in 1527, and the subsequent dissolution of European Christendom begins the affliction. The fifth message to the Church of Sardis speaks to this post-Lutheran epoch. Being alive, thou art dead. Strengthen the things that remain. Observe and do penance, and thou hast a few. As we saw above, it corresponds to the Babylonian exile of the Jews. So that's from the chapter on the seven letters to the seven churches from the book of Revelation. Dr. Taylor Marshall again goes line by line through the entire book. You're going to want to get it. It's very, very good. But let's talk about the timeline of future events. So now you know a bit about the history. Holhauser believes we are at epoch number five. So we are at the time of Babylonian exile. We are going into a time of exile. So I want you to keep that in mind as we talk specifically about these epochs, where we're at now and what we can expect next. Because in appendix number two, Dr. Taylor Marshall gives us the breakdown in a very simplified way. Fifth epoch of exile ending in minor chastisement. The Catholic Church, like the Jews under the Babylonian Empire, will be confused by the introduction of heresy and idolatry. This begins in 1517 under Martin Luther. Christians are separated into thousands of conflicting sects. Like the Jews, the church will lose her sacred city, her Ark of the Covenant, and the glories of her divinely ordered worship. What? Are you saying things are going to get that bad for us too? He goes on to say point number two. According to private revelations, there will be increasing natural disasters and wars. Have you heard of any natural disasters recently? Like the, I don't know, Earthquakes happening in North Africa, Afghanistan, for instance. I mean, there's others. There was just a massive sandstorm in the Middle East. Uh, and then, of course, wars. Anybody hear any wars recently, like the Israeli Hamas one? I don't know. Number three, heresy, schism, and apostasy will increase. Their church will be weak. Has the church been weakened by prelates trying to push LGBTQ ideologies, same, you know, same-sex marriage blessings. How about female ordinations or divorced and remarried communion on demand no matter what? I mean, and other issues as well. Civil wars ensue. Yeah, we've seen that too. Natural disasters. Point number five, in the form of earthquakes and floods that will afflict humanity. We've been seeing this. Some mystics say Russia will invade Europe. Hmm, there have been any conflicts involving Russia recently? Anywhere? Anyone? Anyone? Point number seven, the Pope will flee Rome, go into hiding, and be cruelly murdered. Point number eight, toward the end of the minor chastisement, a saintly Pope will be elected. So Holhauser believes we are seeing the minor chastisement. So if, if Holhauser is to be believed, we are in the fifth epoch, somewhere in there, and we are experiencing a Babylonian exile of sorts, a chastisement, a state of affliction. We are seeing increased heresy and confusion and turmoil and schism and war and chaos and um, natural disaster and all the rest. Point number nine, a Catholic great king, mystics say he is French, will defeat the Russian invasion against all odds. So I talked about this most recently with Xavier reyes Ahol talked about the prophecies regarding the great French monarch. I'll link to that video as well for you to check out. But basically he says there's going to be a French monarch will come at the nick of time. World War III will kick off. There will be a massive nuclear uh, fallout and a third of the world's population will die off and he will come in and save the day and end the war and usher in an era of peace along with the great Pope as well. So is that something we're going to see soon? 
Point number 10, somewhere toward the end of this fifth epoch, which Holhauser believes that's where we are, will be the three days of darkness described by Blessed Anna Maria Taigi, 1837. Darkness will cover the entire earth and the only blessed candles will provide light. Previously, we saw that the fifth vial introduces universal darkness. The fifth vial in Apocalypse 16.10 may very well be the three days of darkness between the fifth and sixth epochs. In point number 11, after the defeat of Russia and the universal three days of darkness, the sixth epoch of peace and consolation will begin. So, Holhauser believes that's where we are. He believes we're going to be seeing a greater World War III and golly gee whiz, between Russia, Hamas, Iran, China, and everything else, it's quite possible we could be seeing that very soon. Then, according to the timeline, a great monarch will show, and he will be able to win that war. And then, of course, we also have a, a, a righteous and a good holy pope that might even bring about a reformation within the church. And then we will see an era of peace. Some might even call that the Immaculate Heart of Mary shall reign. Hmm, interesting. What would we see next? The sixth epoch of restoration or age of peace. Point number one, the Holy Pope will then crown and anoint the great king as the new Holy Roman Emperor of a confederation of Christian nations and societies. Point number two, some foresee a great council occurring at this time to reform all things in Christ, like a council of Trent, for instance, that was needed at the time of revolution to bring about some restoration. Point number three, the gospel will be preached in the whole world. Millions will convert to Christ from the various world religions. Point number four, this state of renewal and spiritual prosperity will last for some time. We don't know how much. However, the heart of the people will grow lazy and lax in their love for Christ. Their fire of charity will dim. This has been a point that's been hard to deal with in some ways, because if you have a three days of darkness, some call it the great illumination, of conscience. So you're allowed to see your own sins from God's point of view, and you are horrified by what you see. So you repent, you turn your heart back to God, sackcloth and ashes. You do acts of penance and reparation for your crimes, your sins. How could you, after experiencing that, grow lazy, grow lax, and turn your heart back to your sins? Well, I mean, just think about it this way. How many times have you been to confession, and before that day is over, you've already committed the same sins you just con confessed? I think we're for being honest, we've probably done that a bunch of times. So it should be no surprise that, in fact, we will see this great period of peace and restoration have a limit to it, which brings us to the seventh epoch and what we can expect coming down the road and the countdown to the second coming. The seventh epoch of the Antichrist. Point number one, the lukewarm Christians. The seventh church epoch of Laodicea is the lukewarm church sets the stage for the Antichrist. As we grow more and more lukewarm, we only make it easier for Antichrist to be revealed. Point number two, first, there is a great apostasy in which most of the world will formally reject Jesus Christ as Lord, God, and Savior. And then the Jewish Antichrist shall appear. So, is your world, the one that you're living in right now, wherever you are, is that becoming more holy, more righteous? more Christ-like? is Are we growing closer in intimacy with God, or is the society you live in growing colder, weaker, darker, more lukewarm? Are they rejecting Christ more and more frequently? I wonder. Let me know what you think in the comments. Point number three, the once strong Christian Roman, Roman Empire that ruled the entire world will at this time cease to exist. The empire will be divided into 10 kingdoms with 10 kings under the power of the Antichrist. Three of these kingdoms will not bow to the Antichrist and will be crushed. He goes on to say, St. Jerome's commentary on the book of Daniel states that the Antichrist will kill the three kings that do not bow to him. Perhaps this is the context in which the Antichrist receives a head wound and is healed by the false prophet. I mentioned this in uh, detail in that Antichrist video I put out Friday, again, linked up. Point number four, the land beast or false prophet appears at this time and prepares the way for the Antichrist, just as John the Baptist prepared the way for Christ. 
The false prophet is the high priest of the cult that worships the Antichrist as God, and worship of this image, of his image, this Antichrist image, is made mandatory. I talked about that in Friday's video as well. The Jewish temple is rebuilt in Jerusalem, and the Antichrist enthrones himself inside it as God, Messiah, and King of Kings. This is a pivotal point on knowing where we're at in the time. That third temple does not yet exist, although there is great preparation to make way for it as soon as possible. There are people preparing for that right now in Israel. I talked about that in the Antichrist video additionally. Make sure to check that out. So the building of the temple is a key indicator of these times. Point number five, the Antichrist seizes universal dominion over the entire world and enforces global worship of himself as God and Christ. So we won't be seeing Islam. We won't be seeing Christianity. It'll be shut down. I talked about that in Friday's video. It will be one world religion, and it will be the worship of the Antichrist in the Third Temple in Jerusalem. Point number six, the two witnesses, Enoch and Elias, arrive miraculously in Jerusalem. Enoch preaches and converts the Gentiles back to Christ. Elias preaches and converts the Jews. The Jews entirely convert to Christ at this time, and all Israel is saved. It is God's holy will that the Gentiles and the Jews, all human persons, come home to him. And as many as will say yes will be saved. We must make way and prepare for that. That's God's will. We should help him achieve that goal. Point number seven, the Antichrist kills Enoch and Elias and displays their dead bodies in the street for three and a half days. The two witnesses are resurrected to the amazement of all. Their preaching and resurrection trigger a global return to Christ. Apocalypse 11 describes how many gave glory to God after seeing the two witnesses resurrected. Point number eight, horrified by the world returning to Jesus Christ, the Antichrist as Gog now begins the great tribulation of three and a half years, culminating in his Armageddon war against the growing church, which now contains all the Jews and many of the Gentiles. Perhaps the church at this time is centered back in Jerusalem. Gog, or Antichrist, and Magog, the Ten Kings, join up to finally extinguish Christianity once and for all. Horrible martyrdom ensues. This is the moment of the greatest and most glorious martyrs in history. Point number nine, the beginning of the three and a half years, or 1,290 days, Great tribulation begins with the abolition of Christian worship, sacraments, and the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and from the time when the continual sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination unto desolation shall be set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So no more public Masses, no more confessions, no more receiving communion, no more sacraments. It's all shut off so that the Antichrist can rule the world for three and a half years. Now, I imagine there'll be hidden masses, private masses, and those folks will be hunted down and martyred because this will also be the great age of martyrdom. Point number 10, the 10 kings destroy Jerusalem in their wrath against Christ and the church. Fallen is Babylon the great. Point number 11, the then there is the death of the Antichrist in Jerusalem. And he goes on to talk about the death of the Antichrist in Jerusalem. So there is the timeline of events. Are we in the fifth epoch? Are we about to see in this minor chastisement and exile? Will we see the three days of darkness soon? What do you think? Leave it in the comments below. God bless you. God love you. And we'll see you next time. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.